Hello again. Just got finished making the top 10 worst superhero movies with me and Joe. So while he's here, we're going to now do the top 10 best superhero movies ever made. These are movies we do recommend you watch. Absolutely. And not just because they're funny to laugh at, because they're actually really good superhero movies. So let's get right to it. Starting off the list, number 10, we have Superman the Movie, the first one. Now, this movie, although... It is a little older, so it's not going to be as pretty to watch, I guess would be the term. I mean, the graphics aren't the best. CGI wasn't what it was today. But you're not watching this movie for those reasons. Great storyline. Great acting. Gene Hackman plays one of the best Luthers that's been today. He's still the one to beat, basically. Um, great storyline. Great acting. It's... Uh, one of those movies that you just like to watch. Right, I'm moving up. Uh, X2 is, the, is number nine on our list. X2 is one of the, uh, you know, 2000 movies that, you know, really sparked uh, the superhero genre. You know, along with Spider-Man 2, the, you know, it really brought along, you know, without the success, I don't think Iron Man or, you know, even the Batmans would have done well without this movie setting up everything, uh, you know, Patrick Stewart, Ian McClellan, Hugh Jackman, great ensemble cast that, uh, you know, they really do a great job acting, and the storyline is actually a really good one, you know, they, they bring they bring in uh, William Stryker, who, you know, is, like, responsible for the adamantium and Wolverine's uh, bone structure, and, you know, and it, it's bringing everyone together, you know, Magneto is working with Wolverine and everyone, you know, and it's just a cool story to see unfold, and it, it definitely is credited for starting up that, restarting that franchise, or in the genre itself. Uh, the next one on the list is uh, the 1989 Batman, uh, with Michael Keaton uh, doing one of the better portrayals of Batman, along with Jack Nicholson, who a long, long time ago was the best Joker around before... Uh, uh, late great Heath Ledger took over, but uh, this was one of the better superhero films of the 80s and 90s era. Uh, it really it, it did start, you know, along with Superman, you know, the first one, the, and the second one. It, it was a really good film. It was good acting, and it was definitely a change of pace from the campy Adam West <laughs> versions that we, you know, were crawling up on the side wall, but, you know, this one's actually got a good dark tone to it, and, you know, it stayed true to the comics, which was very good, other than Joker being the one that killed his family, not Joe Chill. Uh, moving on, number seven, kick it back to me for another Superman movie. It's the newest one, The Man of Steel. Now, this movie is rated higher than the other Superman just because of basically when it came out. We have the technology now to make a very visually appealing Superman movie. We can make it actually look like Superman is real. So, along with a great storyline and a great casting job, actually, it's something that goes kind of under the radar, but they did a great job casting in that movie. Um, very well acted, good storyline. I like, you know, it's kind of cheesy. They joke about the S on Superman's chest and how it's the symbol for hope. A little cheesy how they make fun of it, but it still kind of lightens the mood, introduces stuff. The way they call him Superman, it, it's to the point where it's lighthearted, but it's not overdone. Like some of, a lot of the other movies are that we just talked about in another list. But it's just one of those, not only visually appealing, but plot line, casting, acting, all that stuff. They did a pretty good job with this one. All right, moving up to uh, number six, uh, my personal favorite X-Men film, X-Men First Class. Uh, this really brought back the X-Men franchise after two, you know, shitty movies, uh, X-Men 3 and X-Men Origins. They finally decided that Wolverine isn't the only character they can do, and they went to Magneto and Professor X's younger days, you know, when they first started out, and, you know, it, it, it was very well acted. James McAvoy and Michael Fassman are exceptional actors, and I'm really excited to see what they do in the... Uh, next upcoming film and you know they did bring in Wolverine for a nice little cameo that they you know, was you know, hey you want to join me oh, fuck off you know it's just it, that's all you need you don't need to have Wolverine stealing the show you know there are other mutants 
And I like the addition of Sebastian Shaw, uh, the Hellfire Club, or at least alluding to it, uh, you know, and it, it brought it, it tied into like kind of like a historical aspect as well, you know. You know, they they had John F. Kennedy. They had the Cuban Missile Crisis, and you know, I don't really think that's how the Cuban Missile Crisis actually went down, but uh, <laughs> you know, it, it definitely was a great story to bring up and it revitalized that franchise. Shout out to Kevin Bacon for playing a pretty decent film too. Very good. Moving down the list, number five, we have Spider-Man Two. Now this was. You know, one of the great Spider-Mans. They started out the series very, very strong. Two good movies, Spider-Man 1 and 2. And we won't even talk about the ending. But Spider-Man 2, another one. Casting is huge for all these movies to be successful. And although I don't love Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man, he played him pretty well in number 2. Uh, Doc Ock, they introduced that villain. And it shows how great this movie is when they have... A villain like Doc Ock being the best one. He's a great villain, but when you think Spider-Man, you think of like Venom or the Green Goblin from the first Spider-Man. You know, Doc Ock comes along and steals the show. He's in the best movie. Well acted, good storyline. There was it's not a, forced either. Exact, yeah, exactly. They don't force anything. They don't force the humor, the action. It all kind of flows and fits very, very, very well, and it's it just seems natural, which kind of slipped away from them. But that's a whole other story. Uh, number four, we have the first Iron Man. Now, this one, oh, man, this was an instant classic right away. This probably was the best movie that came out that year, uh, not yeah, just superhero-wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, let's wait until we get to number one on the list. True, true. But that was, uh, it was definitely a front-runner for a while. Uh, very, I mean, Robert Downey Jr., I mean, I'll talk about casting again. He was born to play Iron Man. That cocky, sarcastic <laughs> asshole that you just love. He, it's one of those guys where it's like, how can you like a guy so much? He's just always such a dick. But you do. <laughs> He's such a great, great Iron Man. He plays Tony Stark perfectly. He plays the Iron Man perfectly. It's just a perfect balance between his own... He brings his own sort of attitude to him and... I gotta admit, when I first saw the previews for it, I was like, I don't know, Robert Downey Jr. is starting to kind of make a comeback. <laughs> but, bravo, Robert Downey Jr. Put himself, I mean, greatest comeback in the history of acting, arguably. It's just a great one to watch, and we highly recommend it. Alright, uh, number three, sticking with our theme of great acting in the films. The Avengers it had, had great idea. You know, Tom Hiddleston is one of the best villains uh, on the screen. Uh, you know, lo it, he portrays Loki so well. He's maniacal. He's charming, and uh, you know, he, he just he flows with the heroes, and he's 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 so bad. You love him. You know, he's kind of an anti-hero now after uh, Thor two, but. Yeah, you know, and Robert Downey Jr. does a great job. Uh, I thought Mark Ruffalo was the big surprise in this movie. Yeah. When I first found out found out the Hulk was going to be in the Avengers, I was I was a little worried because the you know, the other two Hulks were shit. It's a, yeah, it, you know, the sucked. Incredible Hulk was all right. Uh, Edward mm. Norton did a good job. Yeah. But Mark Ruffalo definitely turned the character, you know, and it actually kind of made me realize why Hulk movies are so bad. And it's, you know, it's such a depressing character that you need <laughs> other people around them to, uh, you know. And it's one of those. It's one of the stories that you know there really isn't a plot hole to it. I, I really can't see one that's like huge and gaping. Other There's than a world other than the Jatari, you know, uh, <laughs> Phantom menacing, you know, falling out after the the mothership blows up. But you know, it, it was still, and you know, the supporting characters, uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye, were done pretty well. Thor and Captain America, you kind of, yeah, know, they fit in there, and everything was just done so well. That it, it, it's why it's one of the highest grossing films of all time. Great tension between the, all the, the characters, too. You could see them grow together as a unit. They start out all arguing and fighting to the point of actually physically fighting. When Hulk punched Thor, I almost <laughs> peed myself laughing. That's another thing but, of, the, yeah. of the movie is it, it, not last, but I laughed my ass. Hell yeah. You know, you, you gotta, you know, this guy's playing Gallica, you know. It, I would have <laughs> never thought that would be funny in a film, yeah. especially a superhero film, but it, 
you know, it, it's those little things that didn't take away from the movie. Or it's like, is this a comedy or is it a superhero movie? You know, it's, it flowed. Mm-hmm. You got the, the old jokes with uh, Captain America and some yep. personal flying monkeys. I got that one. <laughs> the little things like that that kind of break away and sort of like solidify this as a classic movie. Yeah. Uh, moving on to number two. Uh, this is my personal favorite. Uh, this one is close and dear to my heart. It even knocked Star Wars off my favorite movie of all time. Uh, the Dark Knight Rises. Uh, a lot of people have tried and told tell me how bad it is, but it is such a great movie. I don't know how you can find such bad things about it. Bane is an amazing villain. Tom Hardy does so well in the movie. I, you know that that voice is so crazy. I, I I love I love doing the voice and you know. Every scene Bane is in, I get, I, yeah, you know, I get a little bit of a chub going. Uh, you know, when he blows up that plane in midair, I'm like, holy shit, that was awesome. That that was just the beginning of the movie. Then we were only ten minutes in the movie, and uh, you know, the the rest of the characters did well. I thought Joseph Gordon-Levitt was a good oh, addition yeah. to the story. Uh, you know, they they made him Robin at the end. Spoiler alert: if you haven't seen this movie, you're you're no one, you're no friend to me. So. Um, <clears throat> actually, I shouldn't say that. My girlfriend will get mad at me. <laughs> she the movie. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, and it's it's just a well done film. Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine, they both do, and Gary Oldman, they all do great jobs. Christian Bale, he was it wasn't his best performance. It wasn't as good as he was in the previous two, but he still did a decent enough job in Anne Hathaway. And I thought she was a fantastic Selena Kyle. Um, yeah, and I just and the, there was a good plot twist at the end. I didn't I, you know, I didn't see it coming. Yeah, no. And uh, that was one of the first movies that had me on the edge of my seat. Uh, you know, at the end there, I I was sweating. I was like, oh, oh what's gonna happen? You know, I thought the bomb was going off. And it's got the uh, Bane has some of those lines in there that rival Bond villains. Yeah. He has some of the greatest evil villain lines of all time. And uh, on the subject of Batman, we jump down to our number one, which, of course, I mean, what else is it going to be? It's The Dark Knight. This movie, oh my god, I could talk for hours about this. I know Joe can, too. I mean, to start off with the obvious, Heath Ledger, oh my god, he was the greatest supervillain ever. I, I mean, I don't even understand how, how just deep into that character he got. He was an amazing Joker. He is and forever will be the Joker to beat. I mean, Nicholson, good job, played a great Joker. Heath Ledger just swept him away. Some Talk about lines that rival Bond villains. Oh, my God. We talked for days about that. And that's just the Joker. It's not even talking about the whole storyline itself, which was phenomenal. I mean, Christian Bale, at what I think is his best of the three movies, right. like, he, you see he's he feels, you can just see he's like comfortable being Batman, he's not tired of being Batman, it's just an unbelievable, awesome flick I don't want to spoil too much of it because if you haven't seen it, first of all, where the hell have you been? But you need to see this movie, it is phenomenal, in fact, watch the whole series, watch Begins, watch The Dark Knight and then watch Dark Knight Rises, I promise you will not be disappointed, even if you don't like Batman, it's just that great it's hardly even a Batman film. At some points, it's like a mob movie with yeah. with a guy dressed as a bat and a dude wearing makeup. But it's it's so good. It, there is nothing wrong with this movie. I if you find something wrong with this movie, you have no joy in life. Mm-hmm. This movie blew me away. This is what got me like started on Batman. Mm-hmm. Talking of chubs, I got a full <laughs> chub every damn minute of this movie. Yeah. It's got a great little uh, magic trick in there too. Oh. If you remember that? Oh. Um, Damn. Wow. I'm, I'm just thinking about it. That's a great ass movie. I'm going to watch it now. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, anyway, guys, that's uh, our top 10 list for the top 10 best superhero movies ever made. As always, if you agree, comment. If you disagree, comment. Uh, let us know if you think we you know, missed any, if we overrated, underrated some. Tell me what you think, because believe it or not, I really, 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 really do want to know. And as always, please subscribe. And uh, see you later.